Okay. Ali, I have, I need to have the sharing uh, rights. Oh, so my apologies. Give me, you have the rights. Okay, Ms. So uh, I'm going to share with you today the resolving the mysteries of the horse move or it's a smoke. I'm a bit confused when I you use what was writing the title of this. And then you you at the end of the presentation, I would like that you might be able to uh, help me out my by resolving my confusion about whether it was smoke or it was a smoke. So this work is carried out uh, by my and my team members. He cargo is my research group, and it was carried out under the uh, research project funded by Higher Education Commission of Pakistan. So just a quick look, uh, uh, just have a look at this picture, and now you can write me what exactly you see in this picture uh, in the, the chat box, and then see. This is how the outline of my presentation that I'm going to tell you about the mysteries of smoggery, what are actually the major sources and Pakistan scenario of air quality management, what are actually the major stakeholders. And then being a part of academia, what is actually the role of academia and how, whether they are playing and how effectively they can play and what are actually the way forwards. Most of them you have already addressed. So the things what you have pointed out, I will just simply go through and won't emphasize more. Only I uh, will emphasize more on the things which are actually not addressed by these things. Okay, before I start with about the smoke things, I would like to educate you guys about a very fine and minute things, which are very basic and fundamental things. The fog, this is a natural phenomenon which occurs when due to temperature inversion, a relatively warm layer is trapped between two colder layers in the boundary layer in the troposphere. The ingredients for a fog formation includes the sufficient amount of water vapor should be there. Solid particles like aerosols, like cloud condensation nuclei should be there. Relative humidity as low as 75% is mandatory. Difference between air temperature and dew point temperature. Dew point temperature is, by the way, the temperature where the condensation takes place. Aerosol formation actually takes place. That should be less than or equal to 4.5 degree Fahrenheit. The visibility should be less than one kilometer. So all these five ingredients need to fulfill when the, na the natural phenomena of fog should be there. So then we discriminate different types of fog on the basis of visibility conditions, very dense fog when the visibility is less than uh, 50 meters and the dense fog when it's less than uh, more than uh, you know, 50 meters and less than 200 meters, moderate fogs when it is less than 500 meters, shallow fog when it's less than 1000 meters and it's it's referred as haze and mist when it's the visibility is more than 1,000 meters. Okay, the very important thing, what is the difference between uh, smog and fog? When, well, fog we have already discussed, when this fog is mixed with uh, smoke or any pollutant contamination, then it becomes a smoke, which is fog plus smoke. When harmful substances, including particles, and biological molecules are introduced into our system at a level which cause harmful effects to both human and environment, then it becomes small. So uh, keep, please keep in mind in this thing. Uh, okay, so what are actually the global air quality trends? Recent reports have shown that most of the, the South Asian cities are top ranked among the most polluted cities in the world. And unfortunately, we have Pakistani cities are also listed over here. Uh, besides several efforts made by the Western and developed countries, uh, still 98% of the cities in low and middle income countries with more than 100,000 inhabitants do not meet the real air quality standards. Even uh, the air quality trends are 8% in, in, in increasing during uh, 2008 to 2013 period, according to the WHO reports. And if you see the current conditions or let, latest uh, data from US uh, embassy, US consulate in the world, and yes, it's PM2.5, and this is actually the safe limits. 
and you see every day, I mean, this is for, for just 26th of January, 2021, but still the conditions are poor. This is hazardous level, very unhealthy, unhealthy levels. So the situation is still not good in Lahore, although it's not listed in, 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 in this uh, top polluter cities. I don't know what was the reason, probably it's lack of data, what you guys have already mentioned in, in your polls. So this kind of visuals uh, were taken from the city of uh, Lahore during the first, two, first seven days of November 2016. This was the first time that the people of Pakistan realized that something unusual uh, is happening. And so this was, by the way, the uh, daytime, mid noon time, and everybody was complaining about eye irritation, respiratory issues, and the several warnings were uh, issued by the Punjab government first time in the history that they have to restrict outdoor activities. There were several incidents of, uh, I mean, uh, accident, road accident in the several section of M2 and M3 motorways were closed because of uh, reduced visibility and in order to avoid the uh, human losses. Okay, I look into this and uh, we see uh, what's going on. So I look for the aerosol optical depth from satellite data. And if you see here, very confined uh, plume of aerosol load was there. And, and then I try to compare whether it is uh, uh, why it's very prominent in 2016. What, what, what's about the 2012, for instance? Here you see it was there, but not that prominent over the Pakistan region, like in, over Indus Plain but it was over the Gangetic Plains. Uh, close to the is New Delhi, there was a very confined flu. So 2030 situation was a bit different, close to Indian border that was there, but mostly it was towards the main, mainland India. And if you see here 2014, it was further south in the Indian side, uh, but very further south in Pakistan side as well. So south of Punjab and Pakistan as well. And 15, the case was again more on the Indian side and some part of Pakistan Punjab as well. But the 16 was very unique and it was a very confined flu over the both Punjab and the Indian side of Punjab and some other part of India as well. So I look for uh, whether the satellites are looking the, the right thing or not. So there was luckily uh, arrow node station over in, in, in the city of Lahore. And you see the both data sets, uh, the brown from the satellite and blue from the ground observation, they've pretty uh, much uh, compared well with each other for all these eight, eight nine, 10 days. We started from 31st of October, and we have like aerosol optical loading over there. Of course, uh, we do expect more aerosol load close to normal, but if you compare uh, a correlation, which was quite high, quite uh, 92%, which was quite good. So that gave us confidence that what the satellite have actually have observed, that was exactly the facts happening in the crop. Then we see whether it was a smog or what else. So I, uh, as for that definition of criteria that I shared with you guys in the very beginning, I, I try to characterize whether what were actually the visibility conditions. This is the mean visibility condition line. And it was just first of November was slightly below the thousand meter. So you can say it can fall in the shallow fog. And then fourth of November was a bit close to again in the uh, falling in the, uh, uh, the category of shallow fog or air. So and then for each individual day, I prepared a pie charts on the basis of this visibility. And you see only we do see on the third of November some 16% uh, of dense fog events and 8% of moderate fog events. Rest was either haze or shallow fog. So then I look for day and night temperature. So the red, red temperatures are at the daytime and night temperature is nighttime. And the temperature was quite high, so it's difficult to uh, substitute whether it was uh, to, uh, to, to constitute the uh, fog. The relative humidity during nighttime was 76%. And the uh, dew point temperature difference was 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So you see, the, this, so in principle, uh, it does not fall in the category of fog formation, but still the visibility was poor. And then the similar case for 
all the eight days what we have uh, seven days what we have seen so it in principle it did not fall in the categories of the fog formation very few where we have a few incident during the night time which is very common which is reflected here in the day of third and fourth November and this could be so okay then I try to look for okay if it, it wasn't the fog then why we have reduced visibility and very high aerosol load. We try to utilize uh, data sets from different instrument on board uh, and different satellites and we try to characterize the type of aerosol. And just you see the scenario of uh, first two, well, it is, yeah, for um, first two, seven Novembers, uh, you see here the smoke particles are very well uh, located over the region where we have this high aerosol load. Then I, I put the fire activity, which were actually reported by the several satellite uh, instruments, the same satellite instrument models. And you see they're very well, pretty much uh, correlated, uh, co-located with uh, the aerosol load. So that means whatever we have observed over the region, uh, both Indian and Punjab region, that was mainly coming uh, as a consequence of these fires. And you see all these aerosol load and the small particle types were really well uh, co-located with the fire incidences. So that may, gave us a confidence level because it wasn't the uh, fog conditions, rather it was a smoke that has actually loaded a high aerosol load and also, so it reduced the visibility. Okay, so then we try to look uh, for whether what is actually the origin of these air masses that are actually ending up in the whole city of Lowe. So this is this point is uh, city of Lowe. So we run these tra trajectories backward in the time, and we see most of the trajectories are actually coming from the Indian side, and you know, but particularly over the area where we have prominent fire uh, incidences, like in this this map. And similarly, for other days, I took these uh, randomly uh, second of November and fourth of November. And very interesting summary of this thing. So the, the, just you see, this is the fire incidences in the background. You see the aerosol uh, loading by, uh, by the uh, satellite. And the different colors mean trajectories that are run for different days. Like first of November, in the, in this is the blue color. Second of November is the yellow color, and so on. So very interestingly, I compared the aerosol load at City of Lahore during uh, from both from satellites in the in the uh, in the uh, in the bar with the pattern, and also from the uh, from the, the solid bars. And you see, very interesting, let's say, the 1st of November, the trajectories were originating from the city of, uh, from the Indian side, and we have aerosol loading was quite high. Similarly, for 2nd of November, very much high, and we, we do see the trajectories are actually originating from, uh, from the Indian side. And the 3rd of November, again, from the Indian side. 4th of November, the red one, also from the fire activity areas. The 5th of November, which is actually the white color over here. So they have reduced 50 per 40 percent uh, when the trajectories were coming from inland. And it was very much prominent when the 6th of November and the 7th of November when the trajectories are coming from inland. So that gave us confidence in the scientific evidence that whatever we have experienced during these seven days of November, it was majorly uh, predominantly and contributed by the across the border fires that are taking place by the Indian farmers when they have lit their uh, rice paddy fires to avoid. So now my confusion, I guess I was able to, to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, remove my confusion, I saw, resolve my confusion. That smoke has actually choked the life in the future capital of and even in the Indian side in the, up to New Delhi as well. So most of the fog even took place when I would, I would say there wasn't smoke at all, but normally that was during uh, the uh, evening time, uh, sorry, the night time. Type of the aerosol observed were predominantly smoke and aerosol flow was coincident with the fire. Events. So the, the, the cross border and large paddy fires were actually the main reason what we have experienced as a 
smoke or smoke may be of the same. So I have been advocating this message to uh, several uh, several years, but last year, the one person from PMB who wrote, uh, gave an interview to the Don, and they acknowledged that it, it is not actually the smoke, but it is smoke. So if you then I look for uh, uh, the fires activity that is going over the years over indo gangetic plains, the part of uh, in, in Pakistani Punjab and Indian Punjab and some Haryana is taken daily with this thing. So you see a very prominent cycle, fire cycles, to, to, two fire cycles are taking place here in uh, May, May to June and then October to you know, uh, December period. Uh, this is very common from starting from 2015, 16, 17, up to 2019 in the neighborhood. So you see, this is uh, rice verde fires and this is wheat uh, uh, residue fires. And uh, this is very common, very common, uh, 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 how to say, crops in both part of Punjab. Uh, so uh, this is comparison between uh, the, the, the Indian and Pakistani fires. Agriculture fires, particularly, you see the Indian side fires are far, far higher than the Pakistani fires. And there is a slightly offset the, in, in the Pakistani side. Pakistani fires are with, happening in uh, rice party fires, particularly, happening two weeks in our offset in Pakistan. So then we look for the next year, what happened actually they, this time, they, it was a bit earlier, for instance, 17 uh, from mid of October. So it was quite normal conditions. Indo-vegetative plains are very polluted plains with a lot of aerosol loading over here during normal conditions as well. Uh, but uh, during the next uh, week, 27th to 3rd of November, then we see the same crop of uh, aerosol load was there at uh, yeah, Punjab side. And then we look for again the same uh, characteristics of smoke particles there, and mainly they are co-located and concentrated with the the fire incidences. Similarly, I would, we run these trajectories, and when whenever trajectory was coming from the Indian side or the, passing over the, the fire activities, the aerosol loads went very low. For the next week, again, and whenever the trajectories are coming from the fire locations, the, the aerosol load goes up. When it has come from the inland, they are comparatively less polluted. Similarly, in other uh, days, so this is kind of the summary. This time, we actually extensively monitored this uh, for the both months, post monsoon season, October and November. So I characterized them in three different episodes. Episodes one was mainly smoke and caused by the transboundary pollution. As you see, the visibility conditions were quite good, but still. Uh, the, the the smoke was there, but the smoke and some uh, smoke incidents during uh, the night time, and mainly uh, it was contributed by the transporting. And the third episode was mainly smoke, and this was mainly contributed by the inland trajectories. So you see, just just not uh, the transport resources are responsible for the uh, the, the smoke or smoke events. The the, the inland uh, sources or uh, local sources are also contributing to this. So what's about uh, year 2018? This was the first year of PTI government uh, without any discrimination, but they were claiming that we have resolved the issue of smoke and this and that. And so they were claiming because uh, certain several measures were taken by section 144 was implemented by agriculture, but Blickens was shut down particularly in the city of Lahore and districts of Lahore and so and so. But so what was the actual conditions? We look for the visibility condition. Visibility was very high, good. So there was no uh, uh, visibility less than just very few, uh, one day, uh, less than 1,000 meters. Uh, well, not 1,000 meters, close to 1,000 meters. And if we look for the same seven days, so hardly see less than 1,000. So all, it, all the time it was uh, haze. So the, the government was claiming that we have resolved the issue. But it wasn't the case, actually. We look for this uh, the aerosol load as well. It was comparatively lesser, but still some aerosols were there. Uh, so, but when we look for the data, so it wasn't safe either. I show you 
uh, something. So you see here again, we run the trajectories for 2018. A similar pattern was observed in aerosol loading. Whenever the trajectories were coming from the Indian side, we have a uh, very substantial amount of aerosol load. And when they were coming from inland, so we have substantial reduction in the aerosol load as well. So this was actually the condition I showed you uh, in the very beginning of slide. This was the filter papers we have took the sampling of PM10 and PM2.5 during the nighttime, the first time, and the daytime, the low time. So this was actually the condition during 2018, although there was no visibility problem, but still you see how bad and deteriorated was actually the air quality conditions. So a very interesting feature was actually highlighted. So if you see here, the nighttime pollution loads were very high. So mainly it was um, because the nighttime boundary layer height is quite low. So it's uh, the atmosphere is in accommodation mode. Second, the uh, heavy vehicles are allowed in the in the nighttime. So it might be the source. But the third important point was that the garbage or trash burning activity that was taking place in the cottage industry in Lower City was starting after the uh, after the sunset because they, they want to avoid the regulatory parties visit. That's why they, they used to burn this during the night time. And it was more problematic. This was a city in the Multan, almost relatively cleaner than lower, but some episode we have very high loading, particularly at night time is more similar trend for PM10 and PM2.5, mainly because heavy, um, the heavy traffic is uh, low during the night time. Okay, and uh, 1920, so it wasn't safe either. So this is uh, the, the aerosol optical in depth, and spatial coverage. And you see over the years, starting from 2015, it has uh, concentrated and loads have increased and also further dissipated or extended over the southern part and part of Sindh, uh, certain southern parts of Punjab actually, very much. And uh, yeah, this is exactly what I mean. This is based on, again, US consulate data. So PM2.5, this is AQI. And you just uh, for a layman, just look how much dark purple and purple and the red or orange color, which is unhealthy for uh, several groups and uh, massive. And this is for 2019, particularly if you see the September, starting from September and October, November and December in January 2020. So you see there's a huge uh, hazardous loss of air quality have been observed in the city of Lowe. So if you don't see, it doesn't mean that it's, it's safe. So seeing it's not believing, uh, seeing it's not believing is not valid in the city, uh, when you talk about the air quality of city of Lowe or so on. So coming back to the, my list of uh, air pollution issues in uh, Pakistan, it's very similar to what you guys have already said. Now uh, we have frequent uh, smoke episode, which is quite challenging. And I will skip this. This is uh, uh, mainly we have two to three crops due to burning cycles in, in Punjab, Pakistan, or in Sindh as well. We have wheat crop cycle during May and June, sugar cane January in February, rice paddies and cotton during October and November. It is very prominent when we see here in uh, the fire active uh, incidents. If you see uh, the first cycle about sugar cane and, and then the second wheat crop is due, this is from uh, the, the rice party fires in Pakistan. It's, you see it is big uh, with an offset starting from November to December time period. So what are actually the major sources? Vehicular emission, poor maintenance of vehicles, thermal power generation is another uh, from from the prominent source, domestic wood burning, brick kilns emissions, industrial solid waste burning, steel rolling industry, forest fires, transboundary air pollution, the biggest challenge, and the dust storms. You see the list, my list is also well uh, synchronized with you guys. Only your list was missing this transboundary pollution, which is caused by the Indian fire, uh, and also uh, some transcontinental volcanic eruption that have actually produced in brought a lot of SO2 concentrations over Pakistan. So this is uh, already published work. So this is the reference 
and I will skip the process running short of time. Uh, the, the challenge is actually, so the biggest challenge to me is that there's a lack of government will at all level, political will and the public awareness is not there. Uh, so the, the air quality is not on the priority list before 2015 and I, uh, 2016. And I used to call the, uh, the, the, the smog is kind of a blessing in disguise that has moved or uh, motivated the public first and then ultimately the some uh, fraction of the government levels they, they start considering a small air quality or air pollution as a major challenge in this way. Lack of consistent monitoring facility is the biggest challenge uh, in the country. This is the most challenge. Since year 20, not a single air quality monitoring station were working. Um, and and uh, uh, some uh, like the Park EPA in Islamabad, they have rehabilitated in 2018. Mainly the reason is lack of funding, lack of capacity at several levels. So that results in we didn't have in, any proper information about the problem. We did not have any uh, spatial and temporal boundaries of the problems and any continuous monitoring. We didn't have proper database, atmospheric composition, how the things are evolved. We do have park issues, but without any stick implementation because we did not have, have effective stick monitoring plan. So they, therefore, we did not have a proper feedback mechanism at regulatory parties that we can see how good the, their policies are, whether they are effective or ineffective. That results. In. So all these things results in less effective policies to address their conditions. The second biggest challenge is the data sharing. So there's no data sharing, uh, no data syndrome is, uh, is very predominant in the country of Pakistan. Other challenges include uh, unprecedented increase in urbanization in unplanned cities, ever increasing traffic, uh, linear, uh, linear uh, liberating, uh, leasing system has actually uh, increased the uh, manifold uh, Tra traffic fleet, vehicular fleet. So that has worsened their quality, particularly in majors. So these are actually, this is a quick look about the Pakistan air quality management scenario. So mainly INGOs uh, have to implement uh, international agendas, like uh, as a part of, like, for instance, Paris Agreement or some other air pollution related agreements. They provide sometimes funding and they contact uh, government organizations. So in principle, the government organizations are in very good contact with NGOs, but very less, <coughs> sorry, with academia. So inadequate R&D is happening in the country because no R&D is facilities with the government organization and also with the NGOs. Uh, very little uh, R&D is available at the academia level, but they are uh, lack of funding. So they're working on isolation. Their main focus is on paper publication and research pieces. So they are working in, in their capacity, but they're working in mainly in the isolation. So mainly, what is actually an ideal scenario of air quality management? Academia is acting as a research R&D wing for both NGOs and government agencies. So they devise that has, I mean, academia is taken on board or a research institute taken on board while devising the uh, policies and they introduce policies uh, and then the, for feedback, the academia provide a proper feedback to them and so on. But in, in Pakistan, the problem is they are working in um, isolation. There is a missing link among all these uh, gears and lack of information and sharing finding remains by them mainly, particularly in academia, research thesis, NGO project reports and go remote agencies policies remains without any proper feedback. So the, what is the way forward? So the academia should be taken on board, should play active role, provide their feedback. And because it's uh, act as a research wing uh, for both NGOs and uh, government sectors in, uh, in effective uh, air quality management procedures. Hub of, academia is a hub of young and enthusiastic professionals. Question take on a yearly basis capacity. They have certain capacity to work and address these issues. If they can prepare, maintain that and the atmospheric composition to give a timely feedback to the policy making and their effectiveness. Extensive air way forward. So extensive air quality monitoring network across the Pakistan should be in place immediately. 
either it should be done by the government or also by or with the private public partnership or INGOs. Open access to air pollution unit quality data. That, that, that data is generated through the taxpayers money that should be uh, accessible to all, all the stakeholders that, and that can actually help to spread the awareness. Stringent action against uncontrolled urbanization. Citizens calling at faster rates uh, without proper implementation and number of community designs, poorly maintained vehicles, fitness certificate on yearly basis, incentives for electric vehicle hybrid cars should be there, proper traffic management should be there, use of bad quality fuel in industry and vehicles should be prohibited, strictly banned and punished. Restrict ban to the open burning and every time. Strict implementation of energy fuel for all sourcing. Spreading awareness among the masses to own the environment. Capacity building of air quality monitoring and regulatory authorities. Shift to new technologies, not cost effective, but uh, they are efficient. Low cost gas sensors should be uh, promoted and encouraged. Involvement of all, uh, all stakeholders in devising policies. Take initiative to control transboundary air, uh, uh, air pollution by enhancing regional cooperation. This is going to be the another biggest challenge that has emerged in Pakistan. Why this is important? Because poor air quality not disrupt the social circles, but also slow down the pace of pace of development in countries like Pakistan, which have already constrained economy with extra stress on the economy due to geopolitical situation uh, caused by the war against terror, Afghan refugees, internally displaced for persons. So therefore, it is strongly needed to implement strategy which is not uh, efficient, but also cost-effective as well in order to cope the adverse impact of poor air quality and climate change to avoid waste of process. Take home messages for you guys. So air quality issue, issue has been, for instance, this is the latest air quality commission from Islamabad, which is not hard to relatively clean, clean over. Pakistan alone cannot address this small issue as it requires regional cooperation because mainly it's contributed by the, by the, the Indian side of fires. Pakistan has to resolve it by prioritizing it in all aspects because it is not only just damaging or disrupting the social economic circle, it also having cost. I just calculated CO2 emissions cost and it is it's, it's costing you 16.4 billion US dollar during the last couple of years. And if you can take into account all the damages uh, of health and foregone labor and all these things, then the, the, the the cost will be many folds higher. Pakistan has also sought regional cooperation across the border to curtail this issue. Unfortunately, no, no positive response has been obtained. Despite the strong effort made by Pakistan, this issue yet to be properly resolved. And so uh, the, these uh, strong efforts will be shared with you in, in the next lecture. The results of the satellite and ground-based observation has made it clear that Pakistan alone cannot resolve this issue of smoke because this is mainly transboundary and transitional issue. So it is a strong need to share the responsibility among the neighbors, for, particularly during the monsoon season, and share the knowledge and good practices during the rest of the year, as we have seen that the air quality conditions are not just because of uh, in the post-monsoon season during the uh, these nice spreading burnings, this is, uh, but during the rest of the years, it is also very poor in hazardous level. This was all from my side. Thank you very much, you guys. It is acknowledgement of uh, HEC for providing funding and other collaborative partners as well. So thank you very much. So if there is, uh, Uh, Ali, over to you. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, Ali, I guess we, we uh, I guess, running at this time, so we will uh, go, uh, switch to the next lecture because it's uh, in consequence of this, uh, in continuation of this, and very much relevant to the effort taken by Punjab government, particularly to resolve the smog issue. And then at the end of that uh, session, we can take. Uh, lecture uh, question collective 
All right, sir. Um, um, what I'll do is now uh, stop the recording for the session uh, as we have concluded now.